Today we're going to be swapping out an anode rod, which is inside of the water heater. We have well water, um, and we're starting to get a rotten egg smell. Um, from my understanding, and I may be wrong, um, but when you have too much uh, sulfur um, and uh, magnesium in the well water, um, it can produce the rotten egg smell or the sulfur smell. Or, um, you know, some people uh, refer, well, I already said that, the egg, rotten egg smell. Um, it can be harmful. It's normally not in small levels. If it gets very high levels, yes, it can be harmful. Uh, heck, it could rot your pipes out um, if you get too much of it in there. Um, but uh, because it ends up producing sulfuric acid. Um, at any rate, we're getting the rotten egg smell in this system. Um, we've done pretty much everything inside the house, replacing water lines and whatnot. So it's, we've eliminated that it's nothing stuck in the water lines. Um, it's, they've been in here for maybe three to four months. I'm sure there is something inside there. Normally, you'll only get it out of your hot water heater or your hot water side of the system. There are many cases that I've ran into that it'll be on both the hot system and the cold system. Being that we can only notice it on our hot system, uh, we're gonna start with our water heater. Um, in a lot of cases you should drain the unit, um, depending on how old it is. That can help, but it may not. Um, to get rid of the egg smell. But again, today, not to get off uh, subject, we're gonna be swapping the anode rod out. Um, we're dealing with a short space here. It's going to be, you know, uh, hard to, let me see if I can move this. You know, we've only probably got you know, 24 to, to 30 inches here to pull this rod out. Most of all of them I ran into um, are a 1 and an eighth or a 1 and a 16th uh, inch socket. I don't know if you can see that. This is a one and one and one sixteenth. Um, some cases you need a one and one eighth socket. Um, I always use a breaker bar, but you can use a ratchet. Um, sometimes you have to put uh, you know a piece of pipe on there to give you leverage. These things have been put in at the factory. They've got a in, big giant impact. Uh, uh, air operated impact wrenches that they use at the factory to put the anode rod in. They also use it to put in the, the nipples that come out of the heater and believe it or not the pressure relief. Um, sounds odd, it's a weird, it, it reminds me of a pipe threader. Um, the one that they use to put the pressure reliefs on. Um, and that's at least at the A.O. Smith factory in McBee, uh, North Carolina I believe. Probably South Carolina. Either way, um, we're going to shut the water off here at the water heater. You can shut off the water coming into the, the house. Um, if you've got a well, you could shut the breaker off, you could shut a valve off, whatever you need to do to get the pressure off of the water heater. Now, we've only shut the water heater off, so we have not depressurized it. It still has water pressure on it. So, what I'm going to do... is just open the drain valve on the bottom and allow it to spit some of the water out. Um, it is an electric water heater. There's already black stuff coming out of the water heater on the bottom. So, I would say that we should probably drain the entire heater to try to wash out some of the black stuff that's in here. That uh, the black stuff is either A, the aluminum anode rod inside rotting and it's put off this black film. Let's see if I can get you an angle of that. Little, little hard to see. 
but you can kind of see how there's some some black water uh, in the pan that's that's the byproduct of it rotten so we probably should drain the whole water here another thing that you might think about doing because in my situation I'm dealing with an electric water heater yours may be gas it may be electric if it's gas you don't have to worry a whole a lot about shutting the gas off except for the exhaust pipe coming up could be hot um, or it may kick on and be hot while you're sitting there trying to work on it um, if you're dealing with the electric water heater we're not draining a whole bunch of the water down uh, so you may not have to worry about it in the process of just changing the anode rod if you're going to drain the water heater yes you have to shut the power off to your electric water heater because it will burn out your elements but just for the purpose of changing the anode rod you shouldn't have to see that was in there pretty good but I was able to snap it loose now mind you this tanks only six months old um, but again just for the anode rod we're not draining a whole lot of water out so I left the power to it on now when I do when I drain it to try to get rid of the, the sulfur on the inside uh, yes we, we, I don't know what that was, uh, but we will be draining it, or shutting the power off when I drain it. Now you could stick a little bit of duct tape down inside there so that it kind of sticks to the anode rod. Now these are fairly soft and being that this one's now trash I bent it so that we can get this out but you can see the black building up on there um, you normally want to have these in your water heater you know can you pull that out and cut it off right here um, to uh, and then plug it yeah heck yeah should you put in a new anto rod Yes, you should. Anode. I'm oh, sorry, I pronounced that with a T. Um, but yes, you should put a new one in. The whole purpose of them being in there is so that you don't... The, the foreign... Um, the debris, lime, calcium, uh, the magnesium, all that stuff attacks the tank. Mainly the lime and the calcium. Um, and the anto, anode rod is there to prevent the tank from rotting as quick. So essentially what it does is it's there to rot. The anode rod is. You, uh, so yeah, absolutely. I think you should put another one in. Um, the one that we're using today is a mixture of... Of course, it don't say on here. I, I believe it's um, I don't know. I'll have to type it into the thing when I post the video. Um, I used to go in and get it. It's it's either a zinc anode rod or it's a mixture of zinc and magnesium. Now I swore that when you had too much magnesium in your well, it puts off that sulfur smell. Um, but at the supply house, they, because uh, I always would go in and get the zinc ones. But they told me today, hey, this replaces the old one. You know, was, were they trying to sell me some bullshit because they didn't have one? Maybe. Um, but they said this replaced the old anode rod that they used to sell for uh, rotten egg odor. So there's the new one. It's marked green on the top. Probably so that you know it has been switched to a, uh, a different rod. Does it look fairly uh, 
similar to the one I took out yeah if the one I took out didn't have all the rot on it now because I'm dealing with space here I'm just gonna have to put a bend on it um, some of them are made so that you can snap them off if you uh, get them and they're too long when I put this back in I'm gonna try to straighten it out a little bit so that it's not aimed toward my uh, elements because I don't want it to touch the element side of the tank so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it to catch and twist anyway um, if it don't I'm just gonna have to shorten it Text that came with these pieces of uh, styrofoam so I'm going to put one of, the, one of them down in my socket. And that's just so that I make sure I'm pushing it down into the threads. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to cut it. Kicking off. <laughs> That's so stupid. You're supposed to put some pipe dope or Teflon on the threads. Um, I don't know how I got sidetracked. Maybe because I'm trying to teach somebody how to do this. But you know, you're probably already thinking, why didn't you put no pipe dope on there? Well, yeah, because I'm not thinking. So anyway, I'm going to be taking it out and putting the pipe seal on, on the threads. Heck, I'll take it out. I, you know, I don't have to take it all the way out. I swore I've got these in the past and they had some on it. But yeah, so I'm, I'm a goofball. At any rate, I'll probably just stop the video now. You get the gist of what we're doing here. Um, take it out with either a one and a sixteenth socket or a one and an eighth socket. Um, this is just a pretty shell. For whatever reason, you don't have the sockets available, you don't have a breaker bar or whatever. You can put a pipe wrench on here. Um, you can remove this little pretty plate. You know, take your pry bar or something, and, and uh, heck, this one's gonna come out real easy. That little pretty plate will come up out of there, um, which gives me a little more room for that uh, for the anode rod. And if need be, beat down on the top of the heater so it, you know you could get a, a pipe wrench on there or a crescent wrench or something. Now you're going to need a little bit of strength or a little bit of leverage, so you may have to use a cheater bar. Um, So, um, but at any rate, hey, remember, if this was useful for you, subscribe, um, you know, like the video. Uh, I, I try to answer everybody's comments. So if you got comments or, or questions, I'll be more than happy to try to answer them. Um, again, I hope that helps. 
whole reason I started doing this channel was to try to help people do their own work. Like, subscribe, share.